In this video, I will explain hydroponic farming, what it is and what kind of applications there are for different hydroponic farming technologies. What's up and welcome to the channel, my name is Oliver and on this channel we talk about hydroponics and vertical farming. So hydroponic farming or hydroponics in short is a type of farming in which plants are grown without using any soil. Instead of using soil as you would in a conventional farm or even inside some greenhouses, hydroponics grows plants by introducing nutrient-rich water directly into the plant root zones, either by using inorganic growth mediums like perlite, rock wool or an expanded clay substrate, or by exposing the roots directly into the nutrient solution itself. This allows the plants to more easily absorb all the required nutrients that they would normally have to reach for through the soil. In fact, by removing the soil from the farming process, hydroponic farming is able to achieve much faster growth and increased number of harvests when compared to conventional field farming. This is partly because instead of having to grow massive root systems to find nutrition deep inside the soil, hydroponics makes it easy for the plants to find all the required nutrients without any struggle. This means that the plants can use all the energy that is available to what matters, which is growing the stems and the leaves, resulting in faster growth with higher quality product. So to understand hydroponic farming even further, it's good to know that hydroponics itself is just a subsection of so-called Controlled Environment Agriculture, or CEA. Most CEA solutions revolve around indoor farming, where the aim is to control as many growth critical variables as possible. Compare this to field farming, where successful harvests are dependent, for example, on the local climate and seasons, changing weather conditions, successful pest controls, and other environmental variables. Farming indoors using hydroponics means that we can control every single important aspect of the plant's growth including the pH and electric conductivity of the nutrient solution, the amount and type of light given to the plants, the ambient temperature, aeration and airflow, CO2 concentration, as well as the relative humidity in the farm. All these variables are critical when determining the growth and quality of the product, and many hydroponic systems like ours control these variables to the smallest of detail. Talking about this, one of the key aspects of hydroponic farming is the high level of automation that can be introduced into the mix. In fact, during the last 10 years or so, we have seen a huge spike in the development of new automation and smart technologies improving both the production and cost efficiencies of hydroponic systems worldwide. By the way, if you have any questions about hydroponics or hydroponic technologies, do post your questions in the comments below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Anyways, while this can be considered as a general description of hydroponic farming, there are in fact many different hydroponic techniques that vary in terms of technology and potential applications. First, we have aeroponics, which is a type of hydroponic farming where the nutrient solution is distributed to the plant root zones as a fine mist, either on a continuous basis or in scheduled intervals. In aeroponics, the roots are suspended in the air, vertically or horizontally, and they absorb the water and nutrients from the ambient humidity. Aeroponics is an advanced type of hydroponics that requires very close monitoring of the root zones, but when executed correctly, it is extremely efficient both in plant growth and in water usage. In fact, the vertical farming solutions that we use here at Arctic Farming are based on an aeroponic design, and if you want to learn more about our technology, do check out our website through the link in the description box below. Next, we have aquaponics, which is a combination of hydroponics and aquaculture, or the farming of aquatic species. So aquaponics works by circulating water to the growth system from tanks that are actively being fertilized by fish or other aquatic species. Anyways, nutrient film technique or NFT is a technique where the plant's roots lay inside inclined throats with a thin film of nutrient solution flowing through them. This is a common technique, especially in hydroponic greenhouses, and is well established around the globe. Deep water culture, or DWC, grows plants by having the roots fully submerged in a nutrient solution with the plants resting on top of a raft or a lid. On the other hand, a wick system has a nutrient reservoir under the plants with an absorbent wicking material, which goes from the root zones into the nutrient solution. Being submerged in the solution, the wick material absorbs the water, moving it through capillary action from the reservoir 
up to the root system. This technique is optimal for keeping the roots at an optimal moisture level, promoting fast growth. Next, we have ebb and flow systems, which use a growing tray and an aggregate medium, a nutrient tank and a pump with a timer. Ebb and flow systems periodically flood the growth trays with nutrient solution, with all the excess water being drained back into the reservoir. And finally, a drip system delivers the nutrient solution from a central reservoir to each plant through irrigation lines and emitters that drip the solution into the growing medium, either at a constant flow or or through timed intervals. Using drip emitters, the drip systems can fine tune the flow of nutrients to a very high precision. So it's good to note that these seven hydroponic techniques can be used either in single plane productions or also in vertical farming productions. In short, vertical farming is a specialized application of hydroponic farming where instead of using just a single horizontal plane of production, plants are grown in vertical layers. Anyways, the academic literature on controlled environment agriculture has multiple categorizations for different vertical farming methods, but I think the different methods are best summarized by Beckham, Vickers and Monaghan, who in their article, Vertical Farming, a summary of approaches to growing skywards, divide vertical farming methods into six categories. So first we have stacked systems, which use a number of horizontal tiers stacked on top of each other. These tiers can be either stationary or rotating, and isolated or non-isolated. Stationary systems are easier to implement as the tiers are fixed in place and they do not move during the growth cycle. However, depending on the size of the stationary stacked systems, they might require expensive automation tools and lifting devices for maintenance and harvesting, while rotating systems allow easier harvesting by rotating plants inside the growing system so that plants which are ready to be harvested are always brought to the front of the system. While a non-isolated stack system usually presents a single set of environmental controls for all the plants in the system, using isolated tiers allows for more precise controls for each tier and each set of plants. In addition to the stack systems, vertical farming systems can also use balconies, cylindrical designs, or vertically inclined walls, as you can see right here behind me. So hydroponics is a flexible method for soilless farming and the technologies involved can be utilized in a variety of ways. Hydroponic farming techniques like the nutrient film technique and deep water culture are commonly used either as a primary or supplementary technology alongside more conventional greenhouse methods. In addition, hydroponic farming is an excellent solution for urban environments like large cities. In fact, recent developments in hydroponic farming has seen an increase in vertical farms being established in the large population centers, bringing food production right next to the consumers. In addition to greenhouses and urban centers, hydroponic farming can also be used in developing countries or other areas where resource scarcity is a prevalent problem. You can, for example, imagine hydroponics being used in hot and dry deserts or in the freezing cold temperatures of the Arctic regions where farming is limited or entirely impossible due to the local climate. In fact, hydroponics is not only an efficient method for growing plants in food deserts or in otherwise infertile lands, but it has also shown to have potential as a solution for crisis environments where local production has been ravaged, for example, by natural disasters or by war. The last two years that we have been living have also introduced new opportunities for hyper-local farming as a solution for disruptions in the global supply chains. In addition, soilless farming is also considered as one of the go-to solutions for growing fresh food in space. In fact, hydroponics is considered as one of the potential solutions for future space missions aiming for the colonization of the Moon and Mars. Talking of which, NASA has been researching soilless farming technologies already for decades and their research in the growing fresh vegetables in zero gravity conducted on the International Space Station have been highly, highly promising. So as we can see, hydroponic farming has a vast number of promising applications and if you're interested in learning more about the future of hydroponics and especially vertical farming, do subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one.